right? So now we're going to talk about how monocropping, this is the part of the episode where the closed-minded vegans and vegetarians will probably turn me off and I'm cool with that, whatever. I only want the open-minded people. Monocropping, this is where you take a certain plot of land and create one crop, only one crop to live there, like a big giant cornfield you'd see here in Tennessee or whatever, right? So monocropping is literally nonstop killing. You have to kill everything in sight to create a monocrop. You have to kill weeds, you have to kill pests, you have to kill animals, you have to kill fungus, you have to kill bacteria, you have to destroy diversity, and you have to destroy soil to make a monocrop happen. I want you to think about it this way. If you were to picture a healthy ecosystem in nature, right? Let's say you're in the deep woods in a mountain in Montana or something, right? Do you think you'd ever be walking through nature that has not been touched by man and stumble upon 1,000 acres of perfectly spaced rows of corn and nothing else? Never. That would never happen. You would never find it in nature. It's about the most unnatural thing that has ever existed, okay? It's ridiculous. You'd never find that in nature. This is, again, common sense. We have to destroy virtually everything that is natural to create a monocrop. And how does nature respond to all the killing? Well, when there's a lack of diversity, something pops up from the ground. We call them weeds. Weeds are Mother Nature's band-aids. This is Mother Nature desperately crying because you're killing it, and it starts popping up weeds in hopes of bringing back diversity, because diversity is a very good thing in an ecosystem. So this is weeds popping up are literally Mother Nature trying to restore diversity for herself. Up come these new weeds, trying to create diversity, and what do the humans do? We spray them with Roundup. Glyphosate, everybody. And the vicious cycle begins. So lack of diversity leads to destruction of the soil, lower nutrient cycling from the mycorrhizal fungi to the plants, yields smaller crops, smaller volume of crops, right? Which increases the use of synthetic fertilizer. Since the soil sucks, the farmers go buy it in the store and try to plop it on top of dead ground. Like, let's just lay a foot of this fertilizer, this pretend fertilizer mix, because our soil's dead so we can try to grow something in it, right? So what happens is the increase the use of synthetic fertilizer and this spurs the decline of more mycorrhizal fungi. The fungi are under the ground. Doesn't matter how much soil you put on top, the fungi under the ground is being starved out and it will start to die, which kills diversity, which means more weeds grow in a desperate attempt to restore diversity, which leads to herbicides being sprayed, glyphosate, Roundup, to kill those things. Now, an important note here, herbicides are chelators. If you guys have ever done any kind of heavy metal toxin detox or anything like that from the body, we talk about chelation therapy, right? So chelators literally bind to micronutrients and then they're no longer available to the plant. Namely, zinc, magnesium, manganese, iron, and copper. Let's think about a vegan slash vegetarian diet because oddly enough, calcium and iron both rank at the top of the list of common micronutrient deficiencies in vegans and vegetarians. Without those nutrients, the very nutrients that humans also need, the plants can't ward off diseases. Now, new fungi pop up, bad fungi. So, we have to spray fungicides, also detrimental to soil biology and kills the good mycorrhizal fungi as well. Okay, so fungicides kill the good guys and the bad guys. Then, we have bugs. Bugs appear, oh my God, pests. Now we need pesticides. Now, this is a direct quote from Gabe Brown, who talks about the fact that there are only 3,000 insects in the world that will eat our crops and hurt our livestock. For each one of those pests, there are around 3,000 beneficial insects. We don't even have names for most of them yet. Spraying wipes out that whole insect community, including the enemies of those pests, predators, and prey. It's the circle of life, but pesticides kill them all, okay? Now, this pesticide spraying also leads to less pollinating insects, which leads to less crops overall. It's a horrifically vicious cycle. Like this monocropping thing is absolutely insane. It's just destroying land. 
Anywhere where you have a monocrop or any period of time, you're going to kill an entire ecosystem. It's the most amount of death, chaos, and destruction you could possibly impart upon nature. Okay? Now, this is a direct quote from the book, The Soil Will Save Us. Quote, by its very nature, conventional cropping is far greater in assault on the environment than herding animals. Plowing rips apart the crucial underground networks of fungi and shatters the soil aggregates that hold water and gases in the soil. The soil is no longer able to pull carbon from the atmosphere and hold it inside of itself, which would be fantastic for that pesky thing called climate change. The plants could literally save us, if we did it right. And animals play a vital role in this. Someone please tell that to the vegans. All of this death and destruction is required for monocropping the world's most popular crops. The most popular food crops being corn, fruits, the magical health food that everybody needs in abundance, corn, fruit, rice, nuts, and soy, which are also staples of the vegan vegetarian diet. They require monocropping and a tremendous amount of death and ecosystem destruction. Yet these people will scream from the rooftops that their lifestyle is good for the environment. I want you to think about this episode each and every time you hear a vegan make such an absurd claim. An absurdly false claim. Okay? Ridiculous. It's nuts.